The most accessible variation of chin stand is with the blocks and the use of the wall. So Hannah's pretty close to the wall, as you notice. So her, just in front of her knees is where the blocks are, and her hands come just behind the blocks on the floor. So the hands come on the floor behind the blocks. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good. And then from here, the shoulders rest on the blocks, and she'll lift her knees up. Thank so you. you can see her pretty face. <laughs> and walk her feet up the wall. From this position, I'll have her lift one foot up, and then from there, I put my hand on the top of her foot and she pushes, it's counterintuitive, into my hand, yep, to lift the other leg up. Your students will likely be surprised at how light that makes them. And then from this position, she keeps those toes reaching up. And, you know, for those who can hold it, you'll let go. You can come on down for a moment. For some students, that pose may look more like a face plant. So go ahead and just set yourself up shoulders down and just lift your knees up, okay? Students with less mobility in their upper back or in their neck, you can rest down, will have their face on the floor. This pose isn't really a brilliant pose for anyone. It's not the best thing for the neck. For students who have that face plant thing going on, just tell them to proceed with caution and be an adult about it. We don't want to continue to exacerbate um, any injuries that may have happened in the, in the neck, but if they are a student that's never been injured before and they just want to be part of the chin standing crew, it's fine. Just again, be adult about it, be aware. Um, and then homework, opening up the upper back, doing some neck stretches. All right, moving on from here, um, we could remove the blocks, we could take the blocks on a lower setting, do the same work, um, and then we'll eventually move away from the wall. So go ahead and turn around. So from this position, Hannah takes her shoulders forward, chin comes down, all right? And then there's a feeling, <laughs> not of the shoulders <laughs> dropping, but of them lifted, yes. Okay, and then from here, toes tuck, knees lift. She walks the feet in. Now what Hannah's done, because she's an expert yogi, <laughs> is she's got these muscles engaged here. But there are some students who will have a sinking in the upper belly, and this part, staying close to the floor, makes it harder to have the energy lift skyward. So for those students, emphasize upper belly, upper belly, upper belly lift. And then she'll go ahead and lift one leg, and then she can kick herself up. Mm-hmm. Good. And there's that lift. Oop. She's a little out of practice. Come on, Hannah. You're supposed to be my expert yogi. Get it together, girl. It's the hair's fault. <laughs> All right. So here she is. Good. We want to have this contraction here, keeping that lift. Yep. There we go. And release. Good. Good. All right. And then countering. Child's pose is a nice counter, especially with all that low back stuff, and also for the neck.